Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. If you happen to be gluten intolerant or know somebody who is, then this video is for you. Because today folks, we are going to make a fantastic artisan style gluten-free bread that actually tastes and looks like, let's say, normal bread. Yes, no more of that subpar bread that you buy at the store. This one you could easily easily make at home and I'm going to show you how. So if you haven't seen it yet, I had a video put up a couple months ago making an amazing gluten-free bread using this caputo flour. This caputo is gluten-free flour. However, one of the ingredients is gluten-free wheat starch. So even though it's gluten-free, some people can't tolerate the gluten-free wheat starch. So today, folks, we will make a gluten-free uh, bread that is not only gluten-free, but it's also wheat-free as well as dairy-free. So this particular flour, um, the ingredients are sweet brown rice flour, tapioca starch, brown rice flour, arrowroot starch, sour gum flour, and xanthan gum. So absolutely no trace of wheat anywhere. So today's episode is going to focus on making amazing bread using this flour instead of this one. Having said that, if you haven't seen it yet, and if you can tolerate wheat starch, this flour makes an amazing loaf of bread. I'll put the link in the description for you. But right now, let's get started with our completely wheat-free, gluten-free, dairy-free bread. So we're going to start off with 500 grams of this namaste flour, gluten-free flour, which is about 1.1 pounds. So, and yes, very important to have a weigh scale, folks. Don't, don't go with cups in this case. Uh, very important to weigh your ingredients. 4.99, okay, 5.01. I'm gonna be real particular here. <laughs> okay, 500, great, okay. So our flour is in. Um, what we're going to do now, we are gonna add our yeast to the flour. Now make sure you have a good instant active dry yeast. Um, yeast does expire, so make sure your yeast is, uh, is good to go. So here we're gonna add five grams of active dry yeast or instant yeast and uh, just mix that in. And in case you're wondering, um, it's about, oh, one and a quarter to one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I would go with one and a half teaspoons if you don't have the measurement in this case. Okay, now I've got here 400 grams of water. This water I put in the microwave for 30 seconds, so it's about 80 degrees. So you want lukewarm water, 400 grams, uh, of lukewarm water, which is about 14.1 ounces. <laughs> That's why it's easier to use grams. All right, I'm gonna mix that up. And before I do, I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil on my spatula. Olive oil is your friend when it comes to um, making gluten-free bread. So we're gonna mix this completely together and then get it all incorporated. Okay. Now, if you don't have a spatula, you could use a wooden spoon. You could use your hands. <laughs> okay. Almost all incorporated. We're going to use our hands here eventually, so. All right. At this point, now that we're all incorporated, we're gonna add some salt. So what I have here uh, are 10 grams of salt, which is about one and a half teaspoons of salt. So you wanna work that in. And then with your hands, just get into, get into the, to the, to the dough here and just squeeze it. Squeeze it in between your hands and continue to squeeze it. Work it around and just continue to squeeze it and mix all that salt. Make sure it gets incorporated 
into the dough and dispersed nicely. And you know what I'm gonna say, when you think you've got it all mixed in nicely, mix a little more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I think it's pretty good, so I'm just gonna give it a few more squeezes. Okay, so now we need to add some extra virgin olive oil. Basically three teaspoons, which is about 12 grams. So, one, two, three teaspoons. And I'm using extra virgin olive oil, but you can use regular olive oil as well. And then continue to squeeze, right? Just squeeze it right through. Get all that olive oil. You see it's, it's in my bowl here. I see it's in the bottom of the bowl as well. You wanna incorporate all that olive oil into the dough. So again, just squeeze it and mix it in. Now, for those of you who have a KitchenAid, yes, you can use your KitchenAid if you want to mix with your KitchenAid instead of your hands. That is 100% perfectly fine. Again, mix it, don't, don't, don't be shy here. You wanna make sure your ingredients are all mixed in well together. You wanna start off on the right foot so that you end up with a great loaf of bread. Okay, I don't see any more olive oil around. There we go. That's perfectly incorporated right there. So now, quite simply, Okay, there's our dough, very nice. All we do is it needs a little rest. Yeah, just like we take a nap once in a while, a nice little 10 minute rest for our dough and we'll come right back at it. So let's let it rest for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, we can now shape our bread and get it to proof. And in order to proof, we're gonna proof it and let it rest in this bread bonnetone or this proofing basket. So take your gluten-free flour, and by the way, if you don't have a bread bonnetone, you can use uh, any bowl, um, or you could even use a plastic, um, uh, plastic uh, cutting board and just put it on top of that. However, I must admit, these are the absolute best for bread making. Now, be generous with your gluten-free flour, as you can see here, because you do not want the dough to stick to your proofing basket. So I'm going to very generously flour this bread bonnetone. Okay, there we go. You can see that that's pretty generously co coated with, uh, with the flour. And now we are going to shape our dough. And this is also very easy to do. So with a little bit of olive oil on your hands, okay, just take your dough and shape it into a ball. What you're doing here is basically making one big meatball. <laughs> so it's not like regular flour. Remember, this is glu all completely gluten-free, so it's not going to feel like regular dough. Um, it feels totally different. There's no gluten, so you don't have to pull and stretch it. You don't have to knead it. Uh, we basically just want to shape it into a, a round. Get the shape that you want. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to put it in our basket. Very nicely. And let's put a little more gluten-free flour on top. There we go. Now this basically has to oh, about, get about double in size. So we are going to cover it and let it sit for three to four hours, whatever it takes, somewhere in that range. So right now, at this point, sit and rest three to four hours. Okay, folks, it's been three and a half hours. Let's take a look and see how our gluten-free bread dough is doing. Oh yeah, it has definitely risen nicely, gotten nice and big. It's even cracked a little bit there. So this is now basically ready for the oven, but we're gonna let it sit 
We're going to let it go the full four, four hours, but what we have to do now at the three and a half hour mark is preheat our oven and get a Dutch oven going in there. So let's do that right now. So here folks, we have a Dutch oven with a lid. You want um, an oven container with a lid to make this bread and the Dutch ovens are the best. As you can see, it's completely empty and completely dry. Okay, you don't put anything in it. We're gonna put the lid on and basically, you're gonna put this empty Dutch oven in your oven and get it preheated to 450 degrees. There we go, right there. So we want that preheated for a half an hour. That'll give the, the remaining half hour for our uh, dough to rise. The timing will be perfect. So 30 minutes more and we're gonna get it in and start baking. It's been 30 minutes. Time to take that hot Dutch oven out of the oven and it will be hot. So be very careful when you do this, of course. Out it comes. Okay, and we have our beautiful, beautiful dough here. Let's get it inside and start baking. So as I said, this is extremely hot. We're gonna remove the lid and take our beautiful dough, as you can see there, and just slowly tip it in onto your hand. There we go. And see how it came out nice and easy because we put a lot of gluten-free flour in there. Now, with a bread lame, what we're gonna do is score the top. You wanna go down about a quarter inch at least, a quarter inch deep, and make a design of some sort. Come down the middle, come off to the side. If you do not have a bread lame, you could use a razor, uh, or you could even use a pair of scissors. Okay, lid goes back on. Okay, and now this goes back in the oven for 30 minutes with the lid on. There we go. In we go. 30 minutes lid on at 450. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, so let's take a look and see how our bread is doing. Oh boy, oh yeah, see that? Where we cut it there, that's why you cut it. It allows it to rise and shape very nicely. So now we're gonna let that continue to cook with the lid off for 10 minutes. We'll check it out after 10 minutes and then typically after 10 minutes, we'll change the setting to broil and let it broil for five minutes to get some color on the top. Okay, 10 more minutes. Our 10 minutes are now up. Let's just take a look at our bread. See how it's doing? Oh, I'd say it's doing mighty fine. Okay, now I gotta remove this stone. I forgot I had this pizza stone in, because now we gotta change our setting to broil. Okay, and we're gonna broil for five more minutes. So our five minutes are now up. Let's turn the stove off and take a look at our bread oh yeah it's browned up there the top has browned up very nicely and see how easy the bread comes out it does not stick there we go that's browned up nice hey isn't that a nice looking loaf of bread right there browned up nicely steaming piping hot so we're going to cut into this and i'm going to show you we're going to look at the crust and the crumb on this bread but already you could tell it's a beautiful artisan style bread right there. Very, very nice. And it's going to be delicious, but we gotta wait, be a little patient before we cut into it. So we're gonna let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll cut in, take a look at the crust, take a look at the crumb. Time to cut into our bread. Okay, look at there. Very, very nice. So I'm gonna cut it right up the middle. Nice crunch already to the crust. I've only waited like 20 minutes, it's still steaming. I, I should have probably waited a little longer. But there you have the inside. Check out the crust. We've got some nice crust. We got a decent crumb 
going right there. Remember now, this is gluten-free, wheat-free, dairy-free. So pretty good considering. All right, now for the taste test. Always my favorite part, folks, the taste test. And I probably should have waited a little longer because when you wait, what happens is the bread is actually finishing to cook. The inside is finishing the cook. So I cut into it probably about 10, 15 minutes too early, but that's okay. Let's, I like a nice brown piece. We're gonna try that piece right there. Let's give a cut. Again, nice crumb. Little moist. Maybe needed, like I say, needed to sit a little bit longer. Still hot. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's a decent loaf of bread right there. I'm also gonna say, it's not as good as the bread I made, the gluten-free bread I made with this gluten-free flour. However, considering there's absolutely no wheat, no dairy, no gluten, that's pretty good for um, a gluten-free bread right there. And I highly recommend it. If you're wheat intolerant, you could enjoy a decent, a decent loaf of bread right there. I'm gonna say, that's pretty good. The recipe I made with this flour, I'm gonna say is 10 out of 10. The recipe I made with this, I'm gonna say is about a seven out of 10. Still really good, especially if you're allergic to wheat, gluten, dairy, and you haven't had a decent piece of bread in a long time, this is your opportunity to do so right now. And that's what would make me happy. If you start enjoying bread again, if this recipe and video enables you to start enjoying bread again, that's what makes me very happy. So thanks for tuning in as always. And until next time, bon appetito. Not bad.